Hello, this is Chris Minnick with Webucator. In this video, I'm going to show you a beginner's guide to CSS media queries. This video was inspired by a blog post by John Pollock, which is available at the URL shown here. As you browse the web using different devices, you might notice that it can sometimes be difficult to read certain sites on smaller devices such as mobile phones. Your phone may resize the site down to make it fit on a screen, but the text is often very small. It would be much easier to read if the site were specifically targeted to the smaller screen width. There are two approaches that are typically used to make a website easier to read on smaller devices. The first is to create a separate mobile site, and the second is to build a responsive site that will adjust to fit the different screen widths. Here's an example of a responsive site. As it gets more narrow, you can see that everything is moved to fit into a more vertical alignment. The navigation list changes to a clickable menu and the main content adjusts to the narrow width to allow the viewer to scroll down the page and read it normally. Note that the browser isn't required to zoom out to keep everything on the page and so the text displays at a readable size. Responsive design is enabled through the use of CSS media queries. Media queries can detect different properties of the user's browser and enable different CSS to change the way the site displays based on those properties. The four media query properties we'll be looking at in this video are device width, device height, width, and height. Device height and device width refer to the total width and height available to the device for rendering a page. The width and height properties refer to only the width and height of the viewable area of the browser. For example, if you were using a desktop monitor to display a web page, the device width might be 1200 pixels. If your browser is maximized, the width would be the same. However, you could have the browser opened up with a width of 1024 pixels instead of the entire screen. In this case, the device width would still be 1200 pixels, but the width would only be 1024 pixels. If you're building based on the device, you would use device width. If you want to build according to the amount of viewable space in the browser window, regardless of the device, you would use width. In the following examples, we're going to use width. In order to display the version of the page you want served to each viewer, you can use the width property to determine how much space the user has before the horizontal scroll bar appears. For example, you might want to have one design for a browser window with a width of 640 pixels or less, and one for windows with a width of 641 pixels or more. You would write that like this to include different style sheets for the different cases. Alternatively, you can use at media blocks within a style sheet as follows. The min and max prefixes allow you to specify the minimum or maximum width that will be valid for the query. These prefixes also work with height. Since some devices, such as iPhones and Android phones, zoom in or out by default to make the whole page fit the screen, it's important to use this meta tag to prevent scaling and fit the page to the width of the device. Note also, that some older mobile devices may not support media queries at all and will therefore ignore CSS inside of them. For this reason, it's recommended that the default version of a web page use the CSS for small devices and that media queries are used to adapt the page to a larger desktop browser, which is more likely to support media queries. To adapt this example to the mobile first approach, you would remove the first media query and just define a media query for the larger device, like this. Here's an example of a CSS rule that will make a menu list display in the normal vertical fashion for small devices and a media query that will change it to display inline for larger windows. There are a couple issues with media queries to be aware of. The first is that media queries can make CSS files larger and cause unnecessary HTTP requests on mobile devices. If this is an issue for your site, you may want to consider creating a separate mobile site. The second issue is that older browsers, Internet Explorer 8 and earlier in particular, don't support media queries. If you do need to support IE8, you can use a JavaScript alternative to media queries called css3mediaqueries.js or you can create a separate mobile site. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks again to John for the inspiration. 
Check out his site, Script the Web, at the URL shown here for other tutorials related to web development.